Welcome to Cloud Training for Enthusiasts. My name is Dr. Patrick Aigbogu. So today we are just going to briefly talk about virtual machine and the framework that's, that governs virtual machine. Because most of the time when you open a public cloud, you, you just see that there's already a server waiting for you and you can create a server out of, most of all call it server, out of the cloud and start using it, put an application inside. But what, act, what is actually a, a virtual machine? A virtual machine is not actually a physical server. It's a virtualized physical server. What is the meaning of virtualization? That is another word that we're going to look at today. We're going to look at for the word virtualization. Let me put the, let me just drop it here. Talking about, we're going to know what talking about virtualization. Dell Meta. Hypervisor, special machine. So it's not. This is how. This is this is in no in no particular order should do. So because we normally this is how, if you have to put it in a particular order, this is supposed to be control V from let's say for ground up. We want to have a bare meter which is also known as a physical server. This physical server is just like normal server that you see. Uh, it could be uh, Dell, HP. Let me just give you a picture of a physical server. I'll see if server looks like. Let me go to you, no stuff. We also a typical server, typical, typical server. Oh, this is how typical server look like could be like this some of, some of us have seen desktop right this is this is a tower server you can see the price you see the price right then we'll, the server this is an intel you have a specification you know like the way you buy your laptop you understand it has hard ram hard drive sometimes you can even uh increase the hard drive like this specification you see this one so this is the memory 768 7, 768 gigabytes. This is not hard drive. Yes, that mean it's not hard drive. Dim slot, 12 dim slot, meaning this lap, this server can accommodate up to 768 GB memory at dim slot, meaning a RAM. This can carry up to four RAM. The, the form is in for you fact factor, which is talking about the rack standard. The processor, you can see, is the processor, type of processor, number of processor. It says it's going to have two, one or two processor. Then the memory, this one talks about the RAM. Remember, we talked about the RAM just now. Now, uh, we also have description of this. Now, look at the hard drive. You see, it can accommodate SATA hard drive, 3.15 inches. They didn't tell you the number of hard drive because it's going to give you that slot. You are going to buy your hard drive. You can buy like 10, 10 petabytes, two terabytes, 500 terabytes. As, because servers are mighty. They use high memories, not like your Lama laptop. They're not like a normal desktop. If you call something a server, it means that you're going to put an application that people can going to use, people are going to share. So you must have high, strong memory. But now look at all these memory slots. This is the slot. This is the stuff. This is they are describing this. If you look at this thing very well, it look like your desktop, right? Some some server look like desktop. It look like desktop, but just that it has high capacity for super processing, super storage, and everything. This is this is not even a typical. Let's also look for for another typical server. I know some of us have seen this one. This is. How it most of my company, most most companies, this would be the kind of server that they have. So either it comes flat like this or it comes like a tower. And this is a racked server, meaning this server is, is designed for you to rack it, to put it in a rack. What is a rack? A rack is just like a box. A rack is just like a box. For example, this is a rack. Let me give you an idea. I just want to bring you in so that you don't look as if. 
We are talking grammar and grammar. So let's say racks. No, no racks, Sava. Racks. Sava racks. This is how racks look like. Just like a case where you put things. You understand? This is a rack. Understand? Not what is inside, but I mean the case. So when they say a rack server, that's what they mean. That is a server that you can put inside the rack. So they already did uh, designed a rack, maybe one U, two U, four U, different type of racks. Now that is that is for that. Now let's go. So you can see all these servers that I just showed you now. Imagine you buy server for that price. I just showed you the price just now, seven thousand dollars. Calculate it in error. I know if you put it in there, and people will be scared. Like, whoo! This one is seven thousand eight hundred, seven thousand seven hundred and sixteen. This is an Lenovo server. This is ten thousand server, ten thousand dollars server. This is twenty six thousand dollars server. This is twenty six thousand dollars, right? Twenty six thousand dollars. Right? Look at the specification. This is racked. This is a racked. This is a mission critical server. Twenty six thousand dollars. You scroll down, you see specifications. See, this is the processor. Processor it has 2.6 gigahertz, 2V code, jet, gold. See, so you got the processor memory, the RAM. Imagine, see RAM. You can accommodate up to 18 terabytes of RAM. RAM, this is RAM, DDR4. <laughs> Can you get this kind of system? Can you use this 18 terabyte RAM on your system? From 32 gig RAM to 2 terabyte RAM. So you can see. Imagine you buy all this, only just the server. You just install only one application in it or install five, five application and use it to serve. Only one person, one company is using it. It's, it's not really economical, right? It's not a really economical. So one of the reasons why virtualization came is not only because it helps to make things easier, portable. It's also because of cost. That's why visualization was one of the things that was embraced. So let me explain. I've just shown you what a bare metal is. So when you hear bare metal, that is what they mean. Bare metal is just a physical server, meaning physical hardware server. So now let's talk about hypervisor. Just consider server as your normal laptop that you have. You know, whenever you buy a laptop, the next thing you put, right, you come, it already come with its, with its wear, with its uh, systems, system wear that will enable it to, to check for the RAM, check for the hardware, check for the stuff. We call it the BIOS setup. Us, everybody have that. But after that, your system boots up. You have to look out for operating system, right? If there's an operating system, let me put it this way. You know, let me not just be talking. Let me also graphically represent it. Then you have to put have an operating system. Maybe buy a laptop or a server. The next thing you do, let's for example, let's talk about our laptop now. This is our laptop as our example. Then after buy the server, you now put you check the system file can come with its own system software. In the same system software. And that system software is to help the system work. Maybe check for the RAM. Uh, maybe you have drivers under your system software, you have some drivers, you have all that stuff. Then you now go and look for an operating system. Like what you see in my screen now is an operating system. What I'm using to design this thing now is an application. It's not an operating system. Operating system is like you can see I'm using, if I go to my book, say about Mac, you see the operating system I'm using, they will tell me. Look at the display overview. You can see my RAM I'm using. Mac OS, that's Mac operating system. You understand me? The name of the operating system, the version of it is called Moteri. So if you are using Ubuntu, you are using Ubuntu operating system or you're using Windows or different type of, of distribution. And when you get a system, it still comes with, with its own system software. Then the company can either put different operating system, maybe you put Mac OS. Let me use Windows now because know most of us are familiar with Windows. Maybe Windows 10 or Mac or Ubuntu. Then from there, you now put your application on top, right?
for example, now we won't want to install VS Code. I mean, we put our application on top, right? Like our program, like VS Code, right? VS Code, Git, etc. Then we we'll start using it. So this is how a physical system looks. But imagine you having that kind of server and you just do something like this. It will look so over under under utilized. Fine, it will be fast. The application that you put inside there will be very fast. Because usually if you are using the process graphics, it's going to be very fast. But that is not the reason why somebody will spend that kind of amount of money to get this kind of system. Especially this one that is higher as $26,000. This is 20, 26, uh, $26,000, $24,000, 7000 The least year, I think the least year is $3,000, which is also very expensive. Because you can get a simple MacBook for like 1200 So why spending this kind of money? The reason why they are spending this kind of money is because they have it in mind that when they buy it, they are going to virtualize it. Now let's talk about virtualization. This is just a simple, simple personal that can put PC here to D. I'm using this to illustrate just a single PC. Let me know PC now, personal computer, right? So now, the same capacitor all the system have, the same thing, the same um, um, makeup that makes up your personal system, the same makeup that also make up your hard, your server. Your server also have RAM, also have hard drive, also have um, a processor, you understand? Also have all these graphics card, if your system have graphics card. So it's the same thing, just that it's more higher. Now, what they do, when they get a virtual a, a bare metal, excuse me, now they have a bare metal, which is the server I just should share with you now. For the server to work, you must set up your network. Just like your normal laptop, for you to for you to communicate to the internet, you understand me, you must set up what we call your network, your Wi-Fi. But for server, the difference between a personal system and a server is this one of the one of the difference, apart from the fact that it's very high, it has high capacity, you understand me, and it's very expensive. And uh, it's, it's difficult to maintain. Server is difficult to maintain. Personal system is it's more portable. But one of the one of the advantages is that one of the differences is that why it's called a server is that when you have a personal system, eh, you use a personal system to to connect to the internet. Are you getting me? So use it to connect to the internet. But people from the internet cannot cannot pick any of your application and start using it. For example, now I cannot connect to uh, Solomon laptop now eh? and start using the application that he has because it's not a server. It's not supposed to serve me. It's supposed to be used. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a point. It's, a, it's an end point. It's an end point. It's not a server. So... You can, were well, you using the laptop, you can connect on internet, download, upload, but the application inside, for example, this VS Code that you have inside is only for you. That's why it's called personal computer because every application you have inside is for your personal use. You understand? But for server, it's not the case. If you put an application in server, this is why, one of these is why you put an application. For example, I can get an application VS Code and get license. After getting license to it, I was okay. Everybody can use this application. If I want anybody want to use the application, I will just share the application with the not network with the network details, so everybody can log into it. You just log into it, and you to look as if you install the application on your own system because you are using the application from the internet. That's the reason why they call it server. You understand? Because it's serving application to you. So a personal computer does not serve. Okay, well, let me put it here. So that's one of the one of the disadvantages, one of the differences, one of the main differences. A server is supposed to be a, a, a system that you put an application in, you connect it to a network, and from the network, people can consume the application inside. You understand me? The application depends on how you want it. If you want people to communicate, to use it internally, you put it in your internal network. We want people to use it externally, like what we are using now. We're using, if you go to here and put YouTube, 
you go to YouTube, you see this YouTube that, that we watch. This YouTube is an application. Oh, it's in the server. Connect. Are you getting me? So with this World Web uh, URL, we connect to it. You understand? Then we are using this application. I either I upload video into it or I download video into it. But this YouTube, this YouTube application you see is in a server somewhere. It's serving me. You understand me? I, so I can do anything. I can share the link with you. You go and down. You could be using it real time. That is between between a server and your personal system. That's one of the major difference. So know that. Then I also recommend go and do your own personal digging. Get more details about it. You understand? But I just give you the one of the one the main the main because the RAM is the same. Everything is the same. You understand me? Everything is the same. You can decide to even put your server. You can, you can connect your application inside and just use your, your system locally without sending it to the network for anybody to consume. You can even do use tech server like that. You can, can just buy a server machine, buy a monitor on top and connect my network, but I can decide to use it locally. I don't want anybody to connect to the application. But the main reason for server is that when you put application inside, everybody can connect to the application and use it as they like. Now, this is a physical machine. It's a bare metal. I've explained bare metal machine. Now, why virtualization? The virtualization is this. The essence of virtualization is this. This is the essence of the visualization. Let me create a new slide. The essence of visualization is that that I want to take an example of that. Um, this thing we created. That server, let's say for example, then this server that we just did, this particular server, this one is 26,000, right? Let me open it, take a screenshot. Um, the screenshots. Um, sorry, I was my stuff is here. Oh, no, okay. I'm sharing my screen. Excuse me. Yeah, come here. Yeah, open it. Open it. Open it. Open it. What is this? Okay, maybe we'll just keep sticking screenshot because it's like my sharing screen and it's giving me errors taking screenshot. And this is what we are doing. This is step of style. This is rack. But my mind, I can't put my server and this is server. The server, let me take this one out of this space. And go to this bear screen here. Much. Yeah, okay. Now, so the work of a server or the work of virtualization is that instead of carrying this whole system, you see, it's very big, right? And just be using, just put an application on top. I can decide to share it. I can decide to share the application. Sorry, uh, I can't. I don't know why I can't take screenshot. Let me let me avoid this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Now. This is this is let's assume the other server we talked about twenty six thousand. This is twenty six thousand dollar server, and it has seven. How many gig we saw just now? Seven six gigabyte of RAM. Seven six eight. Seven six eight GB of RAM. RAM, not not hard drive. So if a system have seven six GB of RAM, let's try to imagine. The kind of hard drive they can carry. You understand? 
So now, let's assume that my RAM is this. Then my HDD, hard drive, you can say HD. Maybe I put like uh, um, 900 TB, terabyte of hard drive. Then the processor, maybe I have like, um, I have like 800 giga hours of processor. And the price is $26,000. So it's not going to be cost effective for me to just put application on it. Whereas well, what if the application now crash? Maybe there's a virus in that system. It means that I'm going to reformat everything and it can damage your system. So what I would do is to put, after I've connected it to the network, like in this case, if I connected to the network, I'll put an hypervisor. First, an hypervisor. Instead of putting operating system on top, operating system which will just give you the capacity to use the system as you like. Decide to put the kind of operating system, you can put any application on top. But this an hypervisor, what does it do? It help you to share this big memory. You understand me? It will help you to share this big memory. So if I put a provider on top, what it will, it will provide for me is that this system that has, this system that have this big memory, eh? immediately I put a provider on top, I can decide to start sharing it the way I like. Control C, Control D. I can, meaning I put a provisor on top, means that anytime I want to use it, I can come here and pick. Out of it. You understand me? You can't you not, you not understand that. Okay, now maybe I put a provisor on top. If I want to use the system, I can come out of this seven six gigabyte. I can decide to pick out of it and say, okay, uh this time I want to just get, I want to set up a system of maybe uh um uh, two gig RAM, two gig uh, RAM, or no, let me just say two terabytes. How many TB? We have 900 TB. I can take two TB of HD. Then what I can say, okay, um, the RAM take like, we have seven six, right? I can take like 32 gig RAM. Yeah. Then the processor, I can start to take from the processor. What is the processor? We have about uh, 800 gigahertz processor. I can take like three gigahertz processor. So like this system I set up now, I can use, I can take out of this home resources that it has. I will create a system out of it with this specification. So this machine, because this machine is not a physical, it's not, it's not a physical machine because I've, I've, I've virtualized it. This machine becomes a virtual machine because why? I put an application on top of the server to virtualize it. You understand? So this one becomes a V, a virtual machine, meaning it's going to carry all the resources, the network that this thing is sitting on. It's going to sit on it. You understand? But it's not. It's going to function as, when I'm using it. I will connect to it as if I connect to the whole system, just that I'm connected to a portion of it. So it becomes a machine, right? Because this is a machine, because I'm going to call, with this help of this supervisor, it gives me the capacity to cut from this from these resources and create my VM. So I just explain what VM is for you now. A VM is an hypervised bare metal machine. It's a portion of an hypervised bare metal machine. So if, could uh, maybe, uh, uh well, again, Blessing wants to create his, I say, okay, Blessing, create a virtual machine out of it. Whatever Blessing will do, Blessing will come in and cut our own. Maybe our own resources may not be this much, right? 
maybe our own resources may also be maybe blessing resources. Maybe she wants, she's into graphics. If she's into graphics, she will need more, more, more stuff. Maybe she wants 20 terabytes. Maybe our RAM will be like uh, uh, 64 gig, 64 gig RAM. Maybe a processor, she need like a four processor. Maybe the core, you know, we're also going to have different core. Maybe this one we have like, maybe you have like 64 core. Maybe when she wants to pick, she can just pick like uh, out of the 64 core. Maybe she pick like four core or five core, six core. You know, let's say she pick eight core. So that is what she used in creating this uh, virtual machine. But you can see, despite she picked out of it, the most you, you use from the virtual machine, the, the one what it will be remaining will be small, right? Because you're going to subtract what you have from, from, the, from what is already created. You subtract it from what you have. Let me put it this way so that you know. So this is what blessing wants. So this is what, but when, when a his, Let's assume that this is a his laptop, a his system. When a his is using this system, there won't be any trace that uh, that blessing is also using now. They will be acting as if they are machine on their own, separate machine on their own. So blessing will not do, will not put, decide to put our own operating system. Maybe she will put Windows. Huh? Windows OS. But for but for uh 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 he's me like I like MacBook. I want to use Mac OS, right? He's can put so you so you can decide to do anything you like. You can decide to design your application anything you like and do anything you want. You understand me? Let's say a uh, Mac. So like, like that, I'm just trying to give you an illustration. Hope you understand. So everybody can decide, you can decide to, this system We have its own network, either private network or stuff, everything. So you can decide, then uh, Marvelous can come and create its own. Everybody can come and create its own. Everybody will be using the same lab, the same bare meta, but we don't know, but we'll be using the same bare meta. But this bare metal, the one we are using is a virtualized VM. So yes, that last week when we were creating a VM, we see two instances. What we are actually creating was that we are actually cutting this. AWS called their own EC2. This, this one that we did now, AWS called their own EC2. Yes, that mean? Google Cloud called their own cloud compute, but they are all the same thing. They are all the same. They, have the, they are all the same. Those are their own virtual machine. Now we have to type of virtual like this hypervisor. We have to type like we have the we have the the most popular. We have to type. We have the um, hypervisor one and, or an hypervisor two. Hypervisor one says the one I just illustrated now that you put on top of a bare metal and before virtualizing is called hypervisor one. But there are some hypervisors that you put after you have installed your operating system, you will not put a hypervisor on top. That one is called a hypervisor two, like, like the virtual box that we are, we are used to. It's also an hypervisor, but it's an hypervisor two. But most servers, most application uses a hypervisor. Most data center and infrastructure, like AWS and Sumo, they use this hypervisor one. Like example of a hypervisor one, we have the we have the Proxmos. We have the VMware, which is most popular, etc. There's so much. You know I mean? But this, there are more. But this one, these two are mostly open source, meaning you don't pay for it. You, they are, you can use it without getting a license. But there are still some hypervisor that you have to pay. Maybe they comes with the underlying store. They have their own risk advantage. So that is a virtual machine. Any question? Any question? 
time has finally be finally really be used. So uh, time will not permit me to talk about Docker because the reason why they did this is to consume is so that the resources, for example, if this if your hypervisor is having issue, maybe a his hypervisor gets has corrupt is corrupt. What I would just do is that I try to troubleshoot it. If I'm not able to troubleshoot it, what I would just do I would just remove his system. You understand? I will just remove his system, delete it, and create another one. Or to solve the workload and create another one the way I love, the way I want it. So that that is one of the advantage of creating an hypervisor. Two, you can also create a cluster. For example, you're talking about cluster. Maybe some of us have heard of cluster, cluster, cluster like uh, Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, and Co. We can decide to create twenty instances and make them look as if they are they are working like twenty machines create a cluster, like if I can bind these two together to work in a single unit, it just becomes a cluster. The cluster is a collection of two or three things that are similar, two or three resources that are like, so I say a cluster of VM, meaning two VM and bring them together and like I tie them together with a network or with an application. And they are working as if they are one unit as a cluster. So we can decide to create a cluster out of it for high availability. And interestingly, I can cluster VM. I can also cluster this bare metal. I can carry five bare metal together. I cluster it. I can use them. We have one server, like what AWS is doing. They have one, one in US, one in Canada. You understand me? The, the same thing. So what they do, you can create a virtual machine here. When you log into a system, you don't know the particular server that your system is working on. That's on that you don't know, because they are not supposed to tell you where. But they will tell you the region, but they will not tell you the particular VM, because if you are using, unless you decide to do a dedicated dedicated virtual machine, you take your virtual machine to their system and say, okay, this is where I want my application to be. But because you guys have good infrastructure, I want my server to be there. You can also only do that. It's called dedicated. Uh, you can have a custom virtual machine, but in a in a in a at default, if you are using a shared resources, this is be so. What happens is this: they can they will bind these two together with a cluster. So you said bind these two together. This one and this one. Sorry. So they will lock these two together. They will use this to form a cluster out of these two. So, and they will provide you so that you can create a VM here or you create a VM here. And they will do it in a way that if this VM is this, if this bare metal is dying, this, all the virtual machine here will come into this place. We we'll call it HA, that is high availability cluster. That's what most cloud infrastructure do. So whenever their server is down, one of the server, physical server is going down, all the virtual machine will move to this one. So you will not know what happened. You won't even know, you won't even feel it because they have already configured it that immediately one server is going down, all the virtual machine should move to this. You understand me? That's the HV, we we'll call it high, high availability. So that is what happened. So, so this, this, this is just a virtual machine explanation. Now there's furthermore, I would have want to add Docker to it, but I won't want to add it because a lot has been learned today. Let me not to stress tomorrow. But want to now by the time you create, now we already know we know how to create network now, right? Now by the time I say okay, set up a VM on your network, you know what I'm talking about now, right? Hello? Yeah, we're here. You know what I'm talking about. I say set up a virtual machine. You know what I'm talking about. It's not like you are setting up a server, right? So you understand. I just want you to have this meta picture of what a virtual machine is. So I've shown you a, a physical picture of a server. There's no physical virtual machine that would have shown it to you. But this is, that's why it's called virtual. So it's it's not a physical, it's, it exists inside the machine because of the help of this application called hypervisor. So you can read, see, another interesting thing, try and read about the hypervisor. 
Try and do research. Try and know the type of hypervisor. You understand? Then it will give you more detailed about it. So when they are answering your question, what is it between? Because most times they will ask you, what is it between a virtual machine and a Docker? Some people will just miss it. So what is it between a virtual machine and a bare metal machine? What is an hypervisor? So a simple question like that, if you fail it in an interview, it means that you don't even know what you are doing because it's supposed to be the basic. But how will you be able to remember is after all this class, after this picture, go to YouTube, try and know more, go to Google Cloud, go to Google about it. You understand? It gives you more, more robust knowledge. Is that okay? So I think I will stop here. Then tomorrow, in our next class tomorrow, we want to set up a virtual machine, we'll set up different type of virtual machine, different style, I'll tell you the reason why you must set up my uh, T2 micro, T2 large, T2 medium, the difference between have, what's, what's, uh, having a graphics, uh, high, high performance uh, machine HPM, why setting up high performance HPM, you understand, because uh, some of us already have an idea, but I just just give us a detail. Then we practice. We set up different virtual machines, in private and public. They're talking about backstein holes. We talk about backstein holes tomorrow. Then if we're able to master that, from there to the remaining one becomes easy. Because if you understand networking, you understand VM, a uh, bare metal. You understand VM. Huh? Docker is easy. Every other thing becomes so like a goal. Now, the reason why you will enjoy, enjoy this thing very well, now by the time we put we line us on this virtual machine tomorrow, I won't, you will not be having issue installing an application because you already know Linus. You already know the fundamentals. You already know virtual, you understand me? You already know how to script. So you can script it and, and enjoy yourself. So tomorrow is going to be fun. Please don't miss it. Any question? Any question?